Hello, I am Ice Beast, and welcome back to XCOM Enemy Within. On our previous episode, we had com completed another Exalt mission, and now we're basically waiting for our next mission. Now, I should state that this episode is going to be a little weird, because I accidentally forgot to actually record my audio during the episode, and we actually lost a little bit of footage at the beginning of the fight, too, which is unfortunate. I uh, am doing a voiceover, and next episode will be a standard episode again without the voiceover. I apologize for the lost audio. I am commenting right now that we're basically waiting for this workshop to be done so we can build another satellite uplink and then help expand out that next row down there. And that's what we're going to be doing in the sort of early part of this episode. Because I'm doing the voiceover, I'm going to be cutting some of that early stuff out. But that's what we do. We build, we build some stuff. Uh, these precision lasers come up, which gives me the uh, scatter laser, which is the shotgun equivalent for lasers rather than just for standard weapons as well as the sniper rifle, and then I decide to get the carapace armor because we've been on standard armor for way too long in my opinion, and we need some real armor. So, that's what we do. We then buy a laser rifle, and I think I buy two scatter rifles. In hindsight, it probably would have been better not to buy that laser sniper rifle because my sniper is currently in the infirmary. And for a decent amount of time, too. So we do get some abduction sites, uh, not too much later. Commander. They're in the three locations, South Africa, India, and Canada. I'm going to go to the Situation Room and try to figure out which is the best one the best one to uh, defend, based on the uh, overall continent. If we look at the continent bonuses, we see that uh, Asia is kind of in the worst situation, because China and Japan will go up by one panic if we don't defend India. Uh, United States and Canada... You know, all of North America is pretty much in a good situation, and Africa is in a really good situation as well. So even if everybody goes up one and South Africa goes up two, that's not a big deal. So that's, you know, that's what our strategy is going to be. So we, uh, we're going to actually go do India. Now what we're about to debate right here is what the rewards are. I'm looking at the rewards. And a sniper captain isn't the best reward, but these scientists are what I really need. And I'm really debating, do I want to go to Canada and get the scientists because I need scientists, or do I want to go to India to defend that continent because the other two continents are in much better shape? So uh, that's what this debate is. I will, in fact, go to India. And so now we're going to go look at our team because I went to India. That debate goes on for a while. This is the team we go with. I get a. Uh, I'm unfortunately I have one too few laser rifles, so I can't really get my team laser rifles. And now we're in the battle. So here I am discussing my strategy, which is to go through this building. Uh, this is a thin map, and I'm very happy about it. I, I'm pointing out that there's there's not a lot of space, so I basically just have to move forward and don't have to worry about, you know, moving around. And I'm talking about how nice it would have been to have a sniper to position on that roof because she would have uh, squad sight and damn good ground pretty much on the entire battlefield. But that's okay. Then we immediately run up here and uh, spot the meld, which I think is, is a part of what I'm going to do. I'm going to head for that meld. I bring up my... Uh, my MEC to get game position on that meld, and I immediately am going to spot Dos Mutons. Those are the Dos Mutons, uh, which doesn't make me happy. Two Mutons right off the back are, are pretty bad. And then right about here is where our footage cuts out. So now we move forward once I realize that the footage had stopped recording and start recording again. We are on Iron Man, so I can't really go back and re-record. During that time, I had uh, a few things that happened. You'll notice that there's a girl just... Well, we're going to get the... Uh, Overwatch on from this uh, mechtoid, uh, and luckily we he misses. We actually got pretty lucky on the last round, which is I'm about to talk about. If you notice, there's this girl at the bottom who's just standing completely exposed. Well, it turns out she was standing behind cover. Actually, you saw her go into that cover, but our heavy destroyed the cover by accident, trying to kill a muton. That uh, that left her completely exposed, except for both mutons missed her, which was fantastic. And now our strategy is to focus completely on the mechtoid. I've never fought a mechtoid before, but I figured, considering its health and its damage output, uh, I really needed to kill it right away. So I'm focusing all my fire on this mechtoid. There's also a sectoid hidden around the building, which you can see in the background. And I'm trying to figure out, you know, where can I get positions, people in positions where they can have fire on this mechtoid. I'm going to position our uh, rookie right here. I think she's, you know, actually she's a squatty. Uh, I'm going to position her right there so that she can't be seen by those two mutons, but she has a shot on the mechtoid. And then we're gonna take our shots. So we're basically taking them from least accurate to most accurate, I believe is what I did here. Uh, 
So, yeah, which, the goal here is, which, I believe if everybody hits, we would kill this thing, and that's sort of the goal. Now, unfortunately, uh, our heavy right there missed. I believe uh, this guy hits, though, with much worse odds. That's good, though. You know, we need the, we need the damage. We're going to now use our MEC because uh, she has a nice, good chance to hit, and she's nice and close. And she does good damage. I mean, five is good damage, but now we have eight left to do with two characters left to shoot. Now here's actually where I make a mistake. This this shot is a mistake. It's unfortunate that she misses with a 74% chance. The mistake is that I forget that she can get two shots. So I figure that I'm done with this turn and I need to get this girl somewhere into safe cover. So I put her here, at which point she no longer has a shot at the mechtoid. I do take this sort of random shot at this muton and happen to hit, which is nice. But uh, at this now, right now, I realize that I did have a second shot at this uh, mechtoid. And... Uh, then I'm like, oh man, why didn't I take that shot the first time? Because that would have changed what I did with our uh, with our uh, support. But that's okay. But we get lucky again, and our uh, MEC doesn't take damage. But then this guy does shoot at our MEC and does do good damage, and I'm pretty sure my MEC is going to die at this point. But then I get incredibly lucky that this mechtoid decides to run away, and then he's going to kill this guy, but he doesn't actually kill him, he just critically wounds him, which means I get to stabilize him if, you know, I can clear the battlefield. And then, lucky for me again, this sectoid doesn't attack, he just runs. So I'm in a pretty good position, and now my goal once again is to destroy that mechtoid, but I want to do it without using this heavy, because I really want to use her rocket on those two mutons. There is a position at which I can hit both mutons with her rocket. So what I'm trying to do is keep her where she is without having to use her on either the sectoid or the mechtoid. And so I bring up my MEC right now to uh, kill the mechtoid, or hoping to kill the mechtoid. I don't think he's going to do enough damage. In fact, he can only do 6 damage because we've never autopsied a mechtoid before. Uh, and that actually might be a good resource priority in the future to get the additional damage against the mechtoid. But we do that, and then where I'm hoping I can kill him with this girl. I want to bring her up and put her into bad cover, which is okay, because if we kill the two enemies behind us, that cover is good cover suddenly. So we're going to bring her up and put her into quote-unquote bad cover, like this, and then try to kill the mechtoid. This is a, actually a critical moment, uh, this 82% shot on the mechtoid, and we luckily we're actually going to get it right here. Boom! Right to the face. I was a little worried the mechtoid would explode and kill like my MEC, but luckily it doesn't seem to do that. Now that the mechtoid's dead, we can bring our other heavy around and just sort of own this uh, this sectoid. What are we waiting for? Come on, let's kill the uh, kill the mechtoid or the sectoid. This is me doing a little uh, character swapping shenanigans. So yeah, we kill this sectoid, and that's great. That that clears out our back end, like I said. Now we only have to focus on the front. The two mutons. I'm now going to use this rocket, and here's another critical mistake. There is a shot, just barely, where I can hit both, but I don't really pay close enough attention and don't see that I'm not going to hit the muton on the left, and I'm a little upset about it right here. You'll see my cursor go over there and be like, why isn't that guy hit? And it was just because I just was stupid. And then I decide I'm going to try to flank around with this, this squaddy, hoping to, you know, get a nice line of fire on that muton. Luckily, I get really lucky and this Muton runs away, and this gives me plenty of time to heal up all my forces. We're not going to get that uh, that meld, and that's okay. At this point, we've now pressed up much closer to where the past where the meld was. Actually, I'm right at where the meld is with my MEC, and we're in Overwatch, waiting for that Muton to pop out, and of course, he comes right on schedule, and everybody shoots at him. This is actually a pretty interesting shoot fest, because everyone gets a slightly different time when they react. So then three of them shoot. Out of the four people that were shot, of course, only one hits. So that's kind of BS. Uh, but then, of course, finally our rookie, I believe, the guy who had gotten killed, I healed, resurrect, I, I revived him and then healed him, and then he gets that, sh that that beautiful kill right there. So that was very nice of him. There's also a meld up to the right that we're going to try to move for. That's sort of our next destination. Although this map is so thin that there's basically only one way to go, which is up, you know, forward. Back online. Having, I don't get how I ever actually saw these two uh, thin men. Somehow I spot them from like the super long range distance, but I spot them. I know they're there, and so I'm going to be careful moving up. We're going to move forward with our MEC first, which is a strategy I really like, and I come up to here, and this is actually a really important forward movement, because when I get here, I don't see anything. I mean, I kind of spot that meld, 
But what this means is I can now move forward freely with pretty much okay. all my units up to the same sort of distance that that MEC is because I won't spot anything else. Everybody has the same LOS, basically. I also bring up our uh, smokes, our support, and I bring her up to there where she won't possibly be spotted by anybody. After having brought everybody up, I, uh, this guy moves forward and he just gets totally destroyed by our MEC who's in Overwatch just waiting for me. So that takes out that guy. And then we just, in what I think is we only have one uh, thin man left. That's what I think is going to happen. And in fact, I see him when I move this, this uh, heavy up. Uh, I see the thin man. We've lost the meld by this point. But I see the thin man. I'm unhappy, however, because thin men have good accuracy. She has a really bad shot. Uh, she's in half cover, so I, I bring her back. I pull her back. I'm rolling. Now, I am being very cautious of the fact that now I am in primo poison distance. That thin man can easily poison large groups of my, my people. But I'm okay with it because I have overwatch on uh, so many people that I figure if the thin man pops out, he's going to get completely destroyed, just like his thin man cousin. And then we move her up on a sort of a round flanking position. And this is where I, I'm a little unhappy because I spot this cyber disc. Now, I should have known there was a cyber disc because if you've been paying attention to the sounds that the game's been making, you'll hear uh, an occasional sort of ooh, which is sort of the cyber disc sound that they make. Both of the Overwatch triggers have been on the uh, little repair scout drone beam guy, uh, and we kill it on one of the Overwatch triggers. And now my whole goal is to put all my firepower on that cyber disc. So I use the remaining shredder rocket on my one heavy to do a, a decent amount of damage and shred the target. And then I'm gonna sort of go through all everybody, see what what shots they have. I do know that that uh, that cyber disc is in uh, Overwatch, so I got to be careful if I move. I then pull out my heavy's other rocket, my other heavy's rocket, and I remember that I might be that that there was that thin man over by that door. So I try to position this rocket to hit both of them, and I do. That was I thought that was really well done by me, remembering that thin man was there and trying to get that positioning with the rocket. Now it's how the hell do I, how the hell do I deal with this stupid cyber disc? Again, I can only do 6 damage because I have an autopsy to cyber disc. I don't know how you autopsy a mechanical thing, but apparently you do. I'm hoping that I can trigger the overwatch with this girl because she's far enough away. Then I think, maybe overwatch doesn't trigger once they've like folded back up from being a disc to being like a giant monster thing. So I run out with with smokes. And uh, so they're... Wait, smokes? Are you going to go? I think I run out of smokes. I'm pretty sure I run out of smokes. Yeah, I run out of smokes. So she goes, triggers the overwatch. I think uh, that's not a good result for smokes. Yeah, smokes takes critical damage. Uh, luckily, she's not dead, uh, but she can't be stabilized because we don't have any med kits left, and smokes was one that had them anyways, so that sucks. We bring our rookie up to the same position we're going to bring smokes up and hope that he can do enough damage. It's a bad shot, but I have to take it. And we get lucky, and the rookie hits. And then I'm like, okay, I can finish this off with uh, with my MEC. The problem I make here is I don't realize that uh, the cyber disc is completely immune to, to flamethrower. I wanted the flamethrower because it's guaranteed damage, but not against immune targets, obviously. So that sucks. Not happy about that. I can't really do anything with this uh, squatty back here. So I'm, I'm basically hosed. Luckily, the cyber disc decides to attack our MEC. Our MEC takes damage, but not enough to seriously to kill her. And then I believe I finish this off with our MEC using just sort of normal, normal damage. Yeah. So that ends the battle right here, killing off the cyber disc. Because we won the battle, of course, nobody dies, even our critically wounded person. So this battle actually did not end out too badly. I'm a little unhappy, you know, that I had to test a few things out, including finding out if uh, sh that that Overwatch trigger would happen, which it did. But, you know, sometimes you take a few risks. I got a little unlucky with that, but, but that's what happens. Um, I am unhappy that pretty much my entire force is wounded. Luckily, I did buy uh, that uh, f rapid recovery ability last time. Here, I'm discussing that heat ammo is, the, in my opinion, the much better option always. So I just took the heat ammo on uh, our second heavy. We got a bunch of good stuff. I also noticed that we get five meld, it looks like, no matter what. So we got five meld even though we lost all the meld, so that was nice. And then I'm a little confused right about we here. So we go back to the situation room to look at what's going on, and South Africa has full 
panic, Egypt has gone up to four panic, and Nigeria has three panic. And I don't understand how that happened. If you look at Canada, the United States, and Mexico, that is a standard increase. But this went up like super two for everybody and four for the target country, which I think is a, is a bug. I think that's not what's supposed to happen. I decided to do an intel scan thinking maybe there is a, uh, a, uh, intel scan. whatchamacallit thing in South Africa, South an exile, but there isn't. I, I do decide I'm going to send in an agent to uh, Egypt just to lower that, that thing, and then I'm upgrading our, the sniper we just got with all the sort of standard abilities, squad site, damn good ground. Uh, battle scanner versus disabling shot is always an interesting one, but I think the battle scanner again. And then finally I'm going to give him opportunist, I believe. Maybe I gave him executioner. No, I think I gave him opportunist. No, I gave him executioner on this one. So he's got executioner, uh, which will basically help him eliminate people. Although, snipers end up with such good aim that I may not have needed to give him executioner. And then I'm deciding who to send on the mission. I think I send that really good rookie. So I send him on the mission, and I'm still confused why South Africa is, has such high, uh, such high panic. I'm not happy about that. I don't think South Africa should have panic that high. I really do think that was a bug. But whatever. We have our uh, assault, by the way, getting a gene mod. I don't know how that caused the mass hysteria, though. That's just what I don't get. But whatever. At this point, I decide real quick that I should probably hire a couple more soldiers because our entire army is uh, uh, wounded. So, yeah, we're actually just going to go look at that right now, I think, is the fact that our entire army is in the goddamn, uh, As the alien attacks have become you know, more frequent, is, everybody is, is going to die. Is if we scroll down here, yep, everybody's wounded, including our, our two of our best soldiers, our, our support and our sniper are out for eight days. I really want those back soon. And our, uh, we have our guy in the genetics lab for two days. We So we really want our assault, our heavy, our other assault, and our MEC back as quickly as possible. Those are the ones that we need as soon as possible. Oh yeah, and of course, Juan Lopez became a heavy, just like everybody else, because all I can get when people upgrade are heavies. But anyways, that's this episode. So I thank you guys very much for watching. I will have a standard episode next time, and I'll see you then.